Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the newest games in the Pokemon franchise came out last year and all of the speculation up to this point has been about the eventual DLC. We expect the DLC to be announced next month sometime around Pokemon Day or maybe sometime in the spring if Pokemon chooses to abandon some of the patterns that they've been rolling with over the last couple years. But regardless, we expect this year to be a big year for Scarlet and Violet with patches and bigger DLC updates to come. A lot of people have been speculating about what type of content this DLC could include, whether it's traveling to the Kalos region, if we're going to be exploring the background of the ultimate weapon and how it could affect the great crater of Paldea. What is going on with the third legendary and the paradox Pokemon that are in the crater that eventually you have to catch in the post game? Why aren't there expeditions going into there more often and reporting these Pokemon? Why does everyone die when they head in there? A lot of questions that the DLC could hopefully answer. Something that I don't see a lot of people in the community talking about though, is what this DLC update could do to the performance of the game. The Nintendo Switch, this little console right here, is six years old, almost turning seven pretty soon. The hardware is not up to snuff with what a lot of people would hope for, and a lot of the games are being heavily pushed to the max. Scarlet and Violet are titles that are like that. The performance is rough in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The frame rate dips to five frames per second very often. The texturing work is not the best when you are not right up and near it. The Pokemon models look great in battle, and when you get right up to them, they look excellent. But are we gonna see performance fixes with these titles? Are we going to get patches and updates that fix these? Or is the Pokemon company perfectly content to just continue on with what they've been doing? Are we just gonna, is this the norm? Is this what these games are going to be? Let's talk about it, let's speculate a little bit about it. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that they have already publicly said there's going to be a new patch coming next month. We're getting a new version of the game, they've said it prematurely, and the fact that they've told us so far in advance that that patch is coming leads me to think there are going to be performance improvements. But everything that we've seen under the hood with Scarlet and Violet, how it utilizes the Nintendo Switch hardware, how it uses the different check marks in the hardware itself, a lot of games, and people don't always realize this, are not using the Nintendo Switch's full capability. They're using a downgraded amount of processing power in the Switch hardware, so it is loading things in less than it really can. Austin John Plays has done a really good video talking about the different levels of performance the Switch can reach and how games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet aren't taking full advantage. But when you homebrew a Switch, which I'm not encouraging anyone to do, and you utilize these larger settings, the game runs a lot better. It doesn't run perfect. There's still different environments in the world that don't run as well as others, particularly some of the Team Star areas never run very well. The forest that Team Star is in is one of them, but it does perform better, but I don't know. I'm not a full believer that this DLC update and these patches are going to change things for the better. Are we okay with that though? I think Game Freak is going to attempt to get away with this game performing subpar. I think they could get it closer to a full 30 frames per second, but I don't think that's what these content updates are about. I don't think that's what these DLC patches are for. I think these DLC updates are going to be all about adding new content, new story content, new paradox content, new explanations of the third legendary. That's what I think we're going to be heading towards. I don't think these updates are going to prioritize performance and graphics. They settled up to this point. They didn't delay the game and Game Freak doesn't delay their games. They didn't prioritize a content update ahead of time. They didn't prioritize a big day one patch that fixed things. We did get a day one patch, but we get day one patches with a lot of modern games. There were some things that get added in day one patches as happened with previous Pokemon. Diamond and Pearl BDSP had a day one patch that fixed the music. If you had the data mine of BDSP before it came out, the music was unfinished. That came in a day one patch or a pre day one patch. So this is commonplace. But I don't think that's what the DLC is going to push towards. The DLC, it seems, is going to push towards content updates. The community seems to have 
for the most part, moved on from what the performance of the games are. Now, some media outlets and other Nintendo Switch reviewers and YouTubers have kind of harped on the game's performance, but members of the Pokemon community themselves aren't really making a big deal about the game's FPS and the game's loading time and all of that up to this point. It feels like that's something that's been abandoned in the discourse. I still think it needs work. I think if we get a, the, the patch in February, the patch that we already know is coming, and it doesn't substantially impact the game's performance, it doesn't substantially impact how the world loads in, I think there's going to be some criticism there. And I think a lot of members of the community are going to look towards that big DLC that hopefully gets announced and are going to say, okay, we know there's big content updates coming. We know that there's new Pokemon and new paradox forms and connections to regions and an advancing of the story. But is that enough? If the base game is inherently flawed, are we just okay with more of the base game? Now, a common detraction is going to be that, well, they've had more time to develop this DLC. They've had more time to work on the game and the engine. A DLC update is going to have better performance and better optimization of the engine itself. And while that might be true, you have to understand that they spent a lot of time at the start developing the base game and then eventually developing the DLC. I have my doubts that there were two teams, one team developing Scarlet and Violet proper, the base game, and another team working on plans for downloadable content. I don't think that's how those two things went together. I think it was more of a one and then a one B. They develop the game, they develop the engine, they develop the open world. And then once they do that, once they have the game to an adequate level, they take some of their team members and start working on what's going to be future content. Because let's assume this DLC is one instead of two, as it was with Sword and Shield. We're probably gonna get it at the end of the year. That gives an extra year of development time for the team to work on that content. Is that time going to be dedicated to new story content, new Pokemon, new designs, new areas to explore with the engine? Or is it going to be used to optimize the already existing engine. With Pokemon on a yearly release cycle and them needing something to put out this year, I don't necessarily believe that it's going to be for the former and not the latter. I would be very surprised if a lot of that time was given to optimization. So if we don't get that optimization to a relatively high degree in the February patch, can Scarlet and Violet's performance be saved? Can Generation 9 get rid of some of the criticisms that it is a rush job, that it is poorly developed, that some members of the community are alleging, or is this just the package that we're going to be dealing with? I would be happy with the game as is if the DLC content update is meaningful. If we get a big new chunk of land to explore, if we get a lot of story details that regard Paradox Pokemon and the third legendary and all, all of the mysteries that we don't have answered from, Sword and Sh uh, from Scarlet and Violet, I would be okay with the game performing as is because it adequately performs in most areas. You can get used to a lot of the jank of the game, some of the, the windmills and objects in the background that once you get closer, move at a higher frame rate than they do far away. That's not the game chugging, that's the way the game was designed. The game is designed to only load in, first of all, what's in front of you. That's one of the reasons why there aren't options to have the camera move quicker or slower. It's set at one speed. And that's because the game is loading in as you see it. Anything that's not in your periphery, anything that's in your periphery isn't loaded in. Anything that's behind you isn't loaded in. It's the way the game runs. So if the content update is significant enough, I think I'm okay with the performance not tagging along. But I want to see what that February patch brings before we start projecting what the DLC could bring as well. And there's every chance that we get patches throughout the year that continue to make the performance better in the build-up to the DLC. So there's a couple things that we're dealing with here, and it'll be interesting to see what Pokemon chooses to do and what we see next month with that DLC patch, with that DLC announcement hopefully coming, and with that patch that we know that is confirmed to be coming next month. What do you guys think? Are you looking forward to the patch that we're getting for Scarlet and Violet next month? Are you building up anticipation for the eventual DLC that we're probably going to see? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed seeing this face cam on regular videos, let me know as well. I might be doing it more often. But anyway, that's been the video. If you're excited to see more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content like it in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. My name has been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.